Joe from the mighty Xanadu in downtown Seattle. Casey. Morgan. That's right, and we've got comics for you this week. And you know why you need comics for you this week? Because you've all been shopping like crazy, probably. I I thought they needed comics every week, Casey. Well, they do, but this is more than... They, they need the concentrated dose. They need the pure stuff this week. <laughs> okay. The serious stuff. None of that fake crap. No, none of that, none of that you know, fake whatever. No, we, we got the real... Real highbrow stuff for you here. All right, yeah, I don't know about a highbrow, <laughs> like, but uh, definitely high volume. Yeah, pretty <laughs> awesome. From uh, Dark Horse here to start things off, we have a new number one. Uh, this was apparently delayed a while. I didn't even know it was coming out. I forgot. This is Kelly Sue DeConnick, Chris Sabella, and Ryan Souk relaunching Ghost, the uh, classic Dark Horse Heroes series. I honestly have no idea what it's ever been about. I didn't read the old series. I didn't read the miniseries. Adam Hughes did the early art. But holy crap, Ryan Sook has not drawn a whole comic for so long, and it looks so pretty. There are giant, horrible wolf beasts popping out of people's skin. Dave McKegg colors it. Looks beautiful. Very nice. And a round of applause to Ryan Sook for not being a lazy bastard anymore. Um... Uh, you know, we're, that, that one's too good. <laughs> we're gonna start with Black Science, number two, Rick Remender, Matteo Scalera. Yeah, first issue, Crazy Frogmen, all sorts of awesome nonsense going on. This one, a little less on the Frogmen. Um, definitely, if you were confused by last issue, there's a bit more dialogue. <laughs> They're probably gonna bring you up to speed a little bit more. The first issue is kind of just throwing you out of the spaceship, letting you kind of tumble, skid, and find yourself in yeah. the middle of the giant frog-infested wasteland. And that's what I like about Remender, is you just BOOM! He you doesn't know, care! Right in the face, and, and whatever. You know, very great fun, you know. His stuff is always fun. That's what it is. Remender equals fun. It's fun and painful, alternatively, at the same time. And this tail sclero will blow your nipples off with your free heart. Seriously. Alright, wow. On that note, uh, we'll let your nipples heal for a bit, and uh, just go ahead and toss it over to Will here. Thanks, guys. We begin with Young Avengers. It's the beginning of the end. The end is nigh. It's New Year's Eve. And Kieran McGillan and Jamie McKelvey have a spectacularly awesome party for the Young Avengers. There's lots of more teen angst and drama. They save the universe from all the dimensional craziness, but there's two more issues, two more amazing stories to tell, um, and there's a big twist in all the teen romances in this and action and all that good stuff. So, uh, great way to end the series. They're going to end it on a high note with a big party. Uh, if you've seen Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., you know when they say don't touch Lola. Well, Deadpool is not only touching Lola, he's taking Lola. When you hire Deadpool to kill dead zombie presidents and you don't pay him, there's going to be hell to pay. It's Deadpool versus S.H.I.E.L.D. The brand new work begins this week. Really exciting. Um, Deadpool's not having it, so it should be a lot of fun. Uh, Uncanny Avengers. Uh, I don't even want to give away what happened, just in case you haven't seen a million blog posts about it, but two favorite Avengers. One X-Man died in a very ugly, ugly, ugly way. Now, what happens next? Um, Captain America, Thor, and Wasp against the Four Horsemen and the Apocalypse Twins. Plus, what is Kang doing recruiting all these weird, his own super team made up of Doom 2099 and Strife? Hmm. Uh, whole new twist in Ragnarok now begins this week. All new X-Men are about to get a new member. Look at this. Wolverine is not going to be happy with this. Uh, the all new X-Men and Kitty Pryde went in search of saving a young mutant from the purifiers. And it's X-23. Um, so what can make X-23 scared? Why is she... Uh, and she might be joining them. So what's she going to do when she finds out that they're hanging out at an old whip at X-School? And what's Wolverine going to do? So lots of new twists as a... Uh, Pretty savage, ferocious new teammate joins the young original X-Men. Going to be really exciting. Um, Harley Quinn. She's out of the Joker's shadow. She's on her own in a brand new series by Amanda Connor, Jim, Jimmy Palmiotti. Sorry, you say that fast. Um, she's on her own destiny. She's going to find her own job. She's going to kill the competition. She may even have a new love interest. Finally, away from Suicide Squad, all on her own, Harley Quinn. You know her, you love her. And you're going to love this. Lots of really cool art in this. And my final pick for the week, uh, I love this series because Pete Tomasi and Patrick Gleason are, are just an amazing team. Batman and Robin evolved into now Batman and Two-Face. This is a weird 
strange take on the origin of Two-Face in the New 52. But what's even more fascinating are the McKellen sisters, these, we the, these weird, strange, red-headed women who have this connection to Two-Face's origin and their whole plot to get revenge. And Two-Face wants revenge on them. And Bruce Wayne's trying. It, it's really weird and twisted, but it's a really cool, really, really cool origin of Batman and Two-Face. That's my picks. Back to you guys. We hope your nipples are feeling all right. Mine are, mine are a little... You well, know, yours were kind of messed up. They were kind of messed up anyway. Um, yeah. Now, something else beautiful you can actually rub on your nipples here. This is X-Files Season 10, Volume 1, beautiful hardcover here. They have been really rolling with this series. I don't know how... When did it start? Like, well, like six months ago. ago. And they're <laughs> pumping this stuff out. Yeah. Dang. Well, they had two. I mean, first it was Michael Walsh. Who uh, did an issue with Zero recently and did the comeback series? Yep, and um, now we've got uh, Lana Casa Grande. Uh, this collects the first story arc and I believe maybe a couple other issues. I don't know. There's yeah, I don't know if the Lone stuff. Gunmen stuff that was in there was part of the first story arc or if there was another one in the middle. But yeah. Look at this hardcover. The insides got actually really, really nice oh, that's fake cool. file stuff in nice. there. It's got coffee stains. Nice. Probably the best smelling part of a comic. Ooh, that does smell really good. This week. It, Ooh, it yeah. smells paranormal. Yeah, so if you want to still believe, there's the X-Files. And for the more titillating and scantillating and whatever nippleating uh, of our viewers Pretty sure here, about the first one. that's right, Empowered, Adam Warren, uh, the man who brought you the original Dirty Pair comics, um, Adam Warren who is synonymous with awesome and uh, sexy superheroes now. This is in its eighth volume. Uh, Empowered is, uh, there's actually like five pages now of ketchup. Um, but yeah, this is following the sexy superhero who, um, cannot manage to keep her costume yeah, she on just her body. It's okay, it regenerates. Though. Yeah, it does. And she's joined by Sister Spooky and other fantastically awesome, uh, sometimes stereotypical, but all the time, uh, entertaining, uh, characters, and ooh, Maid Man. I love Maid Man. Yes. Very fun, very goofy. If uh, there are enough puns in your normal superhero comics, you should definitely yeah, be If you're missing that. Brandon Graham this week, we got you on the Adam Warren. Um, and we would also like to throw to the counter with Anna, as usual, who she has some uh, stuff from you this week from Oni, uh, and, uh, and some other... You know. Yeah, why don't we just let her tell us? Okay. Thanks guys, I'm back. I got three books for you this week, but they're all good ones. Our first one, Illegitimate. It's by an unusual author. You might remember Taryn Killam from the SNL cast, who's still currently on it, but he's taking his hand at comic books and writing a mystery adventure story about Jack Steele, a famed agent for Olympus, who meets a dastardly end and they have to build up a new team that can take his place to defeat his evil enemy. And that might come from a somewhat illegitimate place, but um tis. It's a fun book if you like James Bond, if you like Archer, you'll like illegitimates. Second book, a little heavier, Buzzkill is coming to a conclusion in the fourth issue. If you're familiar with the book, you'll know that Ruben, our superhero, has a bit of a drinking problem, but that drinking problem is also what gives him all of his superpowers. When his personal life starts to fall apart, he decides to quit drinking, but that also means quitting his life of superhero-ness. That's a word that I just made up. We'll continue. When villains decide that this is a perfect opportunity to strike back on a city, he has to figure out a new way to put his demons to bed, but also save the city, the people, and the relationships that he has with his family and friends and loved ones. It's pretty heavy. It's good. There's hopefully going to be more coming from this story. We'll see in the future, but you should definitely pick up all these issues. Last book, Boy and a Girl. It's a graphic novel out from Oni Press. This has a lot of stuff going on for it right now. Sci-fi, it has romance, it has adventure, it has a growing up story, not coming of age, they're in their 20s, it's a growing up story. But they exist in a semi-futuristic world where people can be replaced by androids, whether they're living or dead, and emotions are slowly becoming less authentic than they used to be. So 
So our main characters, Travis and Charlie, have only 24 hours to find love with each other before Charlie is whisked away into a government program. They are, it's a statement on 20-somethings finding adventure in their lives and not feeling like they're just wasted space getting out of that post-college blues, depression, I know that feeling. But it's a, if you relate to any of that mumbo jumbo that I just threw at you, this book has a lot going for it and you should definitely pick it up this week as well. I'm going to send it over back to Casey and Morgan. Thank All right, thank you very much, Anna. Always enlightening. Hell, you even sold me on the book. Yeah, and that's right? hard. No, I, I can't even sell Casey on things. I try to give him like things, and he's just like, no, no I don't like fun. No thanks. I don't like fun at all. Uh, speaking of really, really, really fun, you know we've been raving about turtles, right? All the time. We love turtles. We love the current turtle series. Especially if they have large neck muscles. And now, with the newest issue, number 29, the City Fall arc has ended. Everything sucks for the turtles. <laughs> yeah, they're just taking a break. They're taking nature's back. Going <laughs> yeah. to hang out on uh, April and uh, Casey's farm for a bit. In Northampton. Yeah. Now, this issue, of course, not unfortunately drawn by Matea Santaloco, but, but, someone who I didn't think would ever be drawing turtles again, Ross Campbell of Wet Moon and Glory, has returned to draw probably the cutest turtles you will ever find. They look really cute. It's they really do. troubling, honestly. It is. Yeah. They're joined by that fox girl. Who's the fox girl who's with Shredder? I don't, I don't know. I, I, was I she a thing her before this series? She, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, she was, she was close. Uh, but she's there, you know, it's all fun menagerie of animals out in the farm, like. Whatever. Um, and my definite favorite pick this week, yes, it's a video game comic. Um, yes, the first issue came out. Did that matter? No. But number two is out, and why this matters? Jim Mafu. That's right, Mr. Food One himself, the funkiest white man to hold a pencil next to Jim Rugg, is doing a full issue um, that honestly probably has nothing to do with the video game, which is good because I don't play video <laughs> games. Um, but it's well, all no, about. There's still giant robots. That's you know, true, there know. are giant robots. That's all that matters. And there are met pilots, and what do met pilots do? They go out, they hit on women, they're obnoxious, they get really drunk, and then they get in their met pilot, you know, their mechs, and they. Kind of just make an ass. Oh my god! Sense. This is so awesome. This has got flames on his mech with a yin yang on it. I don't even know how more 90s you can get. Um, but oh man, we only got like five of these things. You better buy one. Um, I might buy them all actually and just rub them on my face. Casey, you know you don't have the money for that. I know. Someone's stealing from you. Aww. And a uh, couple quick shots yeah, here. Yeah, no, We got a couple other image Real books. Quick. You already know to buy these, but we just love them so much we gotta talk Zero, about them. Zero. Pretty, pretty deadly, deadly number three. Zero number four. The internet tells you that they're good. Trust it. You know, that. And our cover of the week this week, <laughs> this was a tough one, and we were like, oh, well, this is obvious now. Yeah. And it's in the spirit of the, the holidays this year. This is the Showcase Presents Strange Adventures featuring... The snowman that wouldn't die. That's right. They drop an atomic bomb on these dudes and they don't die. It's like the Santa Killers. He just like, not enough grit. It just keeps <laughs> walking. You know, it's badass. Um, how do they destroy them? We're not going to tell you. No, you're you going to buy and read it to find out. Or you can hunt down the original issue, but you don't have money for that. No, 50 sci-fi, very expensive. <laughs> um, so, whatever. Wow. Uh, Casey, let's just finish up. Next week, um, holidays are here, Christmas. Comics are going to be on Tuesday, Christmas Eve, which is a special holiday uh, present for everybody, which is great. And also, bring back your ballots. Oh, awesome. Tomorrow. Last day. See, look, I'm just going to knock all these down now. What? Nothing else matters but this. The box. You see the box? If you don't bring your ballot back tomorrow, if you tell me that you forgot, I will give you such a sad look that you'll be forced to go home and go get your ballot. Or fill one out that we have here. That works too. <laughs> but fill it out! Bring it in! That's all I have to say this week.